there is Let me just settle myself first. My heart is pounding. <laughs> Amen. So, uh, praise the Lord for this, uh, once again, uh, privilege and opportunity to preach God's word. Though we are not uh, worthy, but God still uses us for his glo own glory. Amen. So this morning, brother, there you have read uh, the book of Galatians chapter, chapter 1. So I just want to make clear I am going to concentrate my, my sermon this morning only on the three verses. But I am going to mention verses from chapter 1. And I will be concentrating from verse 10, 11, and in 12. Can we all stand up and... Uh, May, may I request the congregation to please read once again verse 10, 11, and 12. Ready? Read. For do not persuade men from God. Let's pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this morning. We just want to thank you, God. We are so glad and we are so excited, oh God, about your word. But God, without you, without the power of the Holy Spirit, we cannot do anything. And we just ask the power of the Holy Spirit to continue to manifest his power through the, through the preaching of thy word, through thy words, oh Lord. And be the one to be glorified in our midst. Lord, I pray and I ask for the power of the Holy Spirit to strengthen me, to give me wisdom and even understanding to thy people, O oh God. And I pray, O oh God, for you to strengthen me, that I may be able to do and accomplish the things that you want me to do this morning. Be the one to be exalted, be the one to be praised in our midst. We thank you so much for loving us. We are so grateful for this love. And we are so joyful, O oh God, because you are always with us. And we just want to give you all the glory, Lord, in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Okay, so this morning, bro, I am going to uh, concentrate on three verses, but I am going to uh, give the text first before I will go, before we go deeper on these three verses. So uh, here I entitled my preaching this morning, Paul's calling is from God. Something that we need, something is so common, something is so familiar, but as we continue to give importance in this, we can see even in our lives as a Christian that God called us. God something gave us, He gave us something that we need to glorify Him. And just like preacher John, it is not for ourselves. It is for God alone. All is done, all for His glory. So this morning I am going to uh, teach, or I don't know if, if this is short, but I hope and I pray you will bear with me. And praying for that uh, we'll ask the Holy Spirit to continue to, be, to move in our midst that we may be able to uh, glorify Him through listening and studying the Word of God. But before, let me just give you the text first. Here in verse 10, uh, but later I'm going to explain from verse 1 because we already, we already studied this uh, two times in the, in the past. But now I'm on my third preaching on the book of Galatians. So here... In verse 10, first, for do I now persuade man or God, or do I seek to please man, or if I please yet please man, I should not be the servant of Christ. Paul is saying here that he is not preaching, he is not teaching, he is not doing this thing for man. What he is doing is just doing and obeying the will of God in his life. He is just doing what he was told in this verse. And he said, Why, when I am doing this, I am not going to please man. But what I am going to do is that I am going to please Christ who gave me this. That's what he's saying in verse, in verse 10. Or maybe, and we can see these things from, uh, this, uh, from this verse in verse 10. At least we can see two things. Boy, and later on we're going to study this uh, as we go deeper. 
And here in uh, verse 11, oh, by the way, Paul is uh, once again depending his apostolic calling. He's reaffirming his apostolic calling in these verses. So it's because he's being questioned here. So later we're going to go deeper on this. In verse 11, But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. Ito hindi galing sa tao. This is not from a man who taught me. Okay, this is what he's saying. That is the simple explanation from verse 11. And for in verse 12, For I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. He was taught by the Lord himself. Later on, we are going to see this. And we are going to, uh, to uh, see the lesson, or the, at least what the Lord or the Holy Spirit will teach us through, the, through God's word. So here, Paul, let me just go back for before uh, that, uh, the, the things that we have studied before. And the first preaching, my first preaching is about Paul re reaffirm his apostolic authority. If any people go to verse 1, Paul, an apostle, not of men, neither by man, but by Jesus Christ and God the Father who raised him from the dead. His apostolic calling is from God alone. And we know that. Even though in spite of his, his countenance or his uh, stature, that isang maliit ng tao, he still was used by God. And sometimes, dun po tayo nagkakaroon ng ano, sometimes that is the problem with us. We see ourselves than seeing our Lord. But Paul here, he believed that he is, is, is calling is from God, and he's obeying God, and he's depending now through these Judaizers. Now, kung saan po, now, now we can see, Paul is saying that, that I am an apostle of God. And in my second preaching, uh, we have studied about the danger of false teaching. Why? Because in verse 6 he said, I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of God. Christ unto another gospel. And in verse 7, which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and would pervert in layo kayo sa gospel of Christ. Ito po yung napag-aralan natin nung una. And, and we can see here that the main thing Paul, the, why Paul wrote, if you're going to study the book of Galatians, the reason Paul wrote the, uh, the churches in Galatia, it is because of these Judaizers. What Paul is teaching in chapter 1 and in chapter, chapter 2, you are going to see that Paul is emphasizing that we are justified by faith. And that is the, the thing that we need to know. And that's it. No more, no less. But these Judaizers are trying to add something, another gospel, which is familiar in the Philippines. A lot of pastors are, are adding another gospel to the teaching of God's word. But here we can see Paul says it is enough already. You are making, he said in, in verse chapter 3, you foolish Galatian. You are making fight with God. Why? He already did the thing for you to be saved, and you are already saved, and now you want to add something. And you are adding this, what the Judaizer is teaching. So we, because they are adding to follow the law of Moses, when the law says that the law made everyone expose their sin. Yun po ang law. That's what the law is. So here, Paul is depending himself and trying to, uh, to explain to these people. But the problem is that although there, there are these Judaizers in that place, still the problem are the Galatians. If you're going to analyze what Paul says in chapter 3, say, you foolish Galatians. Why? Eh, kayong tumanggap nito. You are the one who accepted the wrong doctrine. Why? Just like Peter Song saying, Richard John, you are not studying the word of God. You go along the way. Nagsumunod lang kayo sa Agos. That is what Paul is saying here. That's why they were called foolish. But here, we're going to see that uh, in verse 10, uh, we are now going to a bit go deeper. In verse 10, it says here, For do I now persuade men or to win man's favor? Or God? Or do, do I seek to please men? Or if I yet please men, should I not be, uh, I should not be the servant of Christ. In our life, and if we are going to see this verse, God should have the, pro should have the proper desire in our, or should be, God should be the proper desire and the motive of our life. I mentioned that before. And God should always have in our life the preeminence. In our life as a Christian, in First Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 4, before I continue, First Thessalonians, Thessalonians verse 2 and 4, 
But as we were allowed of God to be put in trust with the gospel, even so we speak not as pleasing men, but God which trieth our hearts. God put our heart in test. He tests our hearts. And God sees your heart. And he knows that. But here, there are two things that we can see from this verse 10. At least two things. That God should have the preeminence in our life. And we can never attain the preeminence of God in our life if we will not deny ourselves. And this is our problem. Sometimes we want to serve God without denying ourselves. We want more of us and less of God. And at the same time, we want to serve God. That is the problem. You can never put those things together. And if you want to give the preeminence to God, you must deny yourselves. You must empty yourselves. And you will make it full with the presence of God. Maybe you may be, say, may, you may be saying, oh, the preacher, oh, no, even us as preacher, we're the one being stabbed first when we preach the gospel, when we preach the word of God. But here we can see, sabi nga ni Preacher Jong, when we hear the word of God, we need to obey. Or when we, when we disobey the word of God, what do we feel? We are not about feelings. But as a Christian, when we, when we sin against God, what do we feel? Are you still happy? Or there's nothing at all? If you have the Holy Spirit in you, you will be sad. Maybe you will cry, or maybe you will make your day sira. It will not make your day because you disobeyed God. But the question is this. When we disobey God, what do we feel? Are we really giving Him the preeminence in our life? But Ed, you know me, I always say that we are not perfect. We still commit mistakes. But God, sabi nga, Peter Jung, the standards of God are the standards of God. They will, not, they will never go lower para lang sa'yo. These are the standards of God uh, that we need to do in our life. In, uh, in Colossians chapter 1, verse 18, it says, And he is the head of the body, the church who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. But he should have the preeminence in our life. God should have the pick of our life. And here you will see the Galatian churches, the reason why, and you will know why, the, you want to know why they became, they came into this situation, because they are not allowing the Holy Spirit to move in their life. And that is the problem in, in Galatian churches. If you will go to chapter 5, that is the problem. But makakarating din po tayo doon. So here we can see that, we can see that, God should have, and we need to. Uh, we, uh, God should have the preeminence, and we need to please Him and not men. So how can we do that? How can we empty ourselves and let God be full in our life? In Mark chapter eight, verse thirty-four, it says, "And when He had called the people unto Him with His disciples also, He said." Unto them, whosoever will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Before we obey God in our lives, before we can give everything to God, we need to let go of ourselves. Can we do that? We can. In the other time, we still commit sin. But the reason why we cannot do it, it is because the Holy Spirit is not working in us. If we have the Holy Spirit, let us walk also in the Spirit. It means to say, let us cultivate this through the, the, the Holy Spirit will be the one to teach us. And we are going to uh, go along with Him. So ito po nagiging problema sa atin that we need to take up our cause and follow the Lord. If we deny Him. If we, if we deny ourselves. But unless we deny ourselves, then we will be a thing that will be done in you or in me, that God will be glorified until and unless we deny ourselves. We are not perfect, yes, but we need to deny ourselves. That is the command of God, and that is the standard of God. And sometimes we are expecting things 
from God to ourselves without obeying Him. How can that thing too happen? Hindi yung mangyayari sa atin kasi we are not denying ourselves. The, actually, the reason why Preacher John is saying that we kept on doing this, it is because of ourselves. It is not the power of the Holy Spirit. And if you go along to the book of Galatians, it's what says that, that uh, what you saw is what you reap. You know what's the meaning of that? It, it between physical and spiritual. You will gain if you, from physical if you will allow your physical to, to rule. But if you will gain from the spirit, from your spiritual thing, from the things that are eternal, if you allow God to move in your life. So, so kung bagay na dapat po natin makita as we go along as a Christian, and number two, we have, first we have to deny ourselves. One more verse from Matthew 10.38. 10, it says here, Tama ba? Okay. Matthew 10, 38, And he that taketh not his cross, and followeth after me, he that, he, and he that taketh not his cross, and followeth after me, is not worthy of me. Kundi mo, you are not worthy to God if you will not deny yourselves. If you will not take up the cross. Ano yung cross? Yung cross na ibinigay sa atin ng Panginoon. And this is the problem with us. That we all, we want thing, we want God to be glorified, but the problem is this, that things that we are doing are not worthy to be done before Him. And we cannot give God the preeminence until we do that in our life. I believe that as a Christian, we always struggle. Mostly yata sa paglala, pag wala ng mga laman yung mga bulsa, when there's no more, uh, when your packet or your wallet is empty, you struggle with your family, with your loved ones. We all struggle and we always experience those things in our life. But the things that we need to do in our life as a Christian is to allow God to have His rule. And He will direct our life. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. And in all thy ways acknowledge Him and in all thy ways He shall direct thy path. If we trust, there is something that we need to do. There is an effort there that we need to do as a believer of the Lord Jesus Christ. Another verse, in Luke chapter 14, verse 27, it says, And whosoever do, whosoever doth not bear his cross and come after me, cannot be my disciple. See? Ito yung sabi ko. You want to be a disciple of God? You have to follow Him. You have to deny yourself. You want God to be glorified in our life? We are now a Christian. We have to deny ourselves. We may say, we still commit mistakes. Yes, we commit mistakes. But this is what God, what this is what God is saying for us to be His follower as a believer of the Lord Jesus Christ. We need to deny Him. We want to give Him the preeminence. We want God to be full in our life. We have to deny ourselves. And there's nothing that we can do. And we all want, in our life, we all want to glorify God, of course. I hope in all of us that is our desire. I hope that whenever that we don't, we don't read the Bible, I hope we'll, we feel hurt. I, I hope that we feel sad whenever we don't read the Bible, when, whenever we don't study the Word of God. This is the thing that God wants us to do in our life. The thing that we, He wants us is to, to be full of Him. And the reason why even those things that are, are coming in our life, we make mistakes, we, we nagkakaroon po, sabi nga po lang yung Tagalog, nagkakalitsi-letsi yung buhay natin. Why? Because we are not allowing God to rule our life. And this is something that we need to give importance. And that's why Paul is saying, Paul, do I know to persuade men? Ito pa yung aking gagawin to just to to honor, to have the favor of men. If you look on men, we will fall. But if we will allow God to be our master, He will be the one to guide us. And in all these things, we can see and we can give God the preeminence. We can give God all the glory. And we can make Him rule our life. Kapatid, isang bagay lang po ang nakikita ko I continue to study the Word of God as we continue to study the Word of God. One thing that we need to do in our life, we need to be rich. Our hearts should be full of God's, of God's Word. 
And in that way, there is an instruction that the Holy Spirit will teach you. And we can do things. And whenever we are in a situation, God will teach us. Remember in John chapter 14, that the Holy Spirit is the one reminding us of what He has said about Jesus Christ. Then how can the Holy Spirit teach you of something when you did not study it, when you did not read it? Yeah. And that is the thing that we need in our life. That's why Paul, it's not about men. Although we are struggling, because in this world, in verse 4, this is an evil world. It's what said in verse 4 of Galatians chapter 1, verse 4. It is an evil world. Tama ba? Okay. Present evil world. And we have, we need to, we need to uh, stand firm. Not with our might, not with our strength, but by the strength of the Lord. Just like Paul is saying, it says, no. Like we say in Tagalog, kung meron man akong ginagawa ngayon, kung meron man akong tinutupad ngayon, this is not for you, sabi ni Paul, kung if I may paraphrase it. Ito'y ginagawa ko para kay Kristo. Then, who is Christ in you? Is Christ the hope of glory? Is Christ your strength? Is Christ your everything? But it, sabihin po natin, we, can, we cannot live by a sinless perfection. But at least we can be full of Him as we go along our life. But the problem is this. You have to make a choice. Paul made a choice. And if he will go in verse, if he will go in verse 18 of uh, chapter 1, it says, For ye have heard of my conversation in time, in time past in the Jews religion, how that beyond measure I persecuted the church of God and wasted it. This is the light life of Paul before. And he make a decision to follow Christ. But look at this in verse 10. What, what we can see here, he said, For he have heard of my, of my conversation in time past in the Jews religion. And that is his religion before. Jesus, he was a Pharisee before. But he turned his back. He turned his back on that religion. And now, and he's saying now, that religion is not mine anymore. Same thing with us. We need to make a decision. We need to make a choice to glorify God in our life. And then look at this in verse 14. Paul says, and profited in the Jews religious above my many, it was yung mga ko, in my own nation, being more exceedingly zealous and of the, of the tradition of my fathers. Paul is saying this, on that time, with my same age, ako yung nagunguna. I am the one. Ako yung pinakasmarte. Ako yung pinakamagaling. I am the one exceedingly zealous. Magaling sa all his time. He studied uh, on the city of Gamaliel. Nag-study sa kay Gamaliel. But Paul is saying here, magaling ako when I was on that religion. Yung mga kaedad ko na yan, ababa ko sa mga yan. But what Paul is saying. But in verse 10, he says, no, I will not, it is not by it is not men in my life, but Christ. It is Christ must be the must be be the one to have the preeminence. And we, we have seen Paul's life, how he denied himself. Ito po ang naging struggle natin. But it, let me just ask you one question: Is there a struggle na makita po natin that we are really at least man lang po? that God will see that we are denying ourselves. Will God find that in us? Atong anak ko na to, mahina siya, lagi siya nagkakamali, pero he's struggling to deny himself for me. But it, there must be a desire. There must be a, a choice that we need to make. Because God can see our hearts. He said, He is the one testing our hearts. Is the one seeing, looking at us, that we need to do this for His glory. But it poses in in that time poses. Kung parang sa lang po na if Paul kung magyaya bang lang ako sabi ni Paul, ababa ko sa lahat ng mga ito. But when he met Christ in his life, a change came to him. Even as kapatid. And then, alam niyo po, as I go along and study the book of Galatians, many people are saying that 
forced conversion is is a, is a miraculous thing. Kakaiba. Pero kapatid, same thing with us. Sabi nga lang ni Jesus, mas mapanad besa da those who believe who have faith in me without seeing me. Kahit hindi nila ako nakita, nanampalataya sila sa akin. We have the same Christ, we have the same Holy Spirit in us. Hindi po tayo perfecto, but I just want you to see here, Paul made a decision. What will be your decision? Will you please men? Or will you please God? Will you let God, or will you give God the preeminence and deny yourself? It is a choice that we need to make. That's why in verse 16, Paul here is saying that in 15, But when it pleased God who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by His grace to reveal His Son in me that I might preach Him among the heathen, immediately I conferred not with flesh and blood. It is not by flesh and blood. God's calling him. God set him, up, set him apart. God used him. God called him. Same thing with us. This is not something about yung dapat po makita po natin the, the things that we need to be focused on what God is saying. That's why the, the Bible says, fix your eyes on Jesus Christ, the author and the finisher of our faith. And, uh, you know why? If we will not focus our eyes on Jesus Christ, we will get set aside. And we will not be able to do what Christ wants us to do. That's why Paul here is saying, I, wake, I, I was called by the Lord, and now I am serving Him. So here at least we can see in verse 10 that we need to give God a preeminence and we need to deny ourselves in order for us to do that. And in verse 11, in verse 11 says, But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after men. Ito yung hindi galing sa tao. So here, we can see in verse 11, if we, go to, uh, we will go to verse 1, parehas, parang parehas po sila. In verse, verse 11 and in verse 1, God, uh, Paul is depending his apostolic calling in this verse 11. And we can see that, that Paul is uh, really serious about it because he wants to give God the preeminence. Why? How can you give God the preeminence when you do not know who called you? How can we do these things in our life kung di natin alam, kung wala ko tayong kaalaman sa salita ng Diyos? And here, so Paul says here, but I certify you, brethren, parang I want to make you known. I want to make you, I want it to make it clear to you that the gospel which was preached of me, yung ipinapangaral ko sa inyo, ito hindi another gospel. This is not another gospel. It is not after man but Christ who called him. So here, po, we can see that, uh, let me just go to verse, in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 3, tinan po natin yung ano natin, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 3, it says here, ito po, I think this is about the gifts, wherefore I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God called Jesus a curse, and that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord, but by the Holy Ghost. What Paul is saying here, He's saying and he's preaching under the power of the Holy Ghost. He's under the power of the Holy Ghost. Sabi niya, no one can say these things, or no one can, uh, sabi dun, sa a curse, that no man speaking by the Spirit of God called Jesus a curse. Pwede, walang pwede magsumpa kay Jesus nung natsuma sa kanya ang Spiritu ng Diyos. So here we can see that all preaching is under and under the will of the Holy Spirit under the power and under the instruction of the Holy Spirit in his life. Here, what he said in, in Romans chapter 1, verse 6, 16. Romans 1, 16, he says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Where what Paul is saying, I am not ashamed to preach the gospel because this is the power of God. Even as mga tayo po, mga kapatid, let us continue to desire. Dito po sa, especially here in Cambodia. Although we know it's difficult for us, actually even for a local, for them to, to know if they are really saved or not. But at least we, let us continue to share the gospel. It's not us. Hindi po tayo nagliligtas. It is not, we are not the one who will save. But we are the one to be used by God to warn these people. 
under the power of the Holy Spirit. Same thing with Paul. Says, I am under the power of the Holy Spirit. The reason why he can do that. In another verse, in Psalms, the Apostle King David says here, Psalms 40, verse 9 and 10. I have preached the righteousness in the great congregation. Lo, I have not refrained my lips. Hindi ko ito pinigilan, hindi ko tinago, hindi ko hinadlangan. O Lord, that thou knowest. Alam mo yung Panginoon. I have not hid thy righteousness within my heart. Hindi ko ito, hindi ko lang ito sinarili. I have declared thy faithfulness and thy salvation. I have not concealed thy loving kindness and thy truth from the great congregation. Here we can see how King David shared yung pong mga bagay na natutunan po niya. Same thing with Paul. Same thing with Paul. Paul, I am doing this with full concern in his life because he know he need to do it and he is obeying the Lord Jesus Christ in his life. In 1 Corinthians verse, uh, chapter 1, verse 18, and then in 24, it says here, for the, preaching, for the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto them which are saved it is the power of God. But itong tayo po maligtas, we have seen the power of God in our life. We have seen how God saved us. Ito po hindi bang isang bagay na ngayon natanggap mo na and you will just sit there and do nothing. We have seen, I don't know if you have seen, but we have seen the word of God said we have seen the power of God when we accepted it in our life. When we got saved, we saw the power and the miracle of God. And we are not called just to see it, but to show this power to these people. That's why I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. And we are going to make this known to these people. Who will go to hell? These are the hidden. These are the Gentiles. We are going to look to what is the meaning of hidden. But we need to share the word of God to these people, and we need to we need to do what God wants us to do in our life. Minsan po kasi, you know, sometimes our time is being wasted for ourselves. Mas marami yung panahon na nasasayang ang oras sa sarili natin. Why? Because we are the one concerned of ourselves. That's why the time for God is being eaten by those things that we do in our life. Kaya minsan sinasabi natin, wala na tayong panahon that we can never read the Bible. Praise God for the glory of God. I see my wife every morning and in the evening. She read the word of God. Actually, nga, daig pa nga niya ako eh. Kasi po, sa muna ako, sa gabi lang po kasi ako. But you know what? We need to do this for the Lord. And there are people waiting for us to see this power of God for them. At sino bang gagamitin ng Panginoon? Tayo po yan. Here you can see that Paul was taught by the Lord. He was taught by the Lord. We see here that Paul's we see here that Paul's doctrine is heavenly. He know that he know that what he is teaching, what he is preaching is heavenly. It means from God. Alam po ito po ang problema sa atin. Minsan eh ako kung pamilyar sa inyo to, let me let me just say this in Tagalog. Ang problema ko ganito. Alam naman natin galing sa Dios, pero ayaw nating sundin. Yun ang problema sa atin. Why? Okay, okay. Just, this is an only an example. For example, may galing ka kay Brother Jong. Okay, preacher Gomer, okay, preacher Rilson. And then you have heard the word of God which you know that is this the truth. But the problem, alam mo naman palang tama pero ayaw mo sundin because of that man. That, that certified that you are following man and not God. That's why Paul is very particular when it comes to this. He knows whom he is serving. He is serving the Lord. And he, do, and he don't want to compromise that in his life. Kung alam po natin, narinig po natin ang ating pastor, he preached the gospel, na-review ko tayo, yes, there will be sorrow, kasi nasaktan tayo. But there will be joy after that. But the problem is this, if he preaches the word of God, and after this, continues so, it means to say, you're not doing anything. There is no progress happening in you. Why? Because we need to make a choice. Just like Paul did. He need to make a choice. 
And in verse 12, it says here, For neither I received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the, re the revelation of Jesus Christ. Here, we can see that Paul was taught by the Lord. We can see here that uh, he received the message from the Lord Jesus Christ himself. In Ephesians chapter 3, verse 3, How that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery. So, pero ngayon, hindi na mystery yun. And as I wrote a four in few words. He, he, Paul is saying that, that how that by revelation he made known unto me, he was taught by the Lord Jesus Christ himself. But ito ang problema, laging sinasabi po, ni, lagi itong sinasabi ni, uh, ni Pastor Joel, meron naman tayong isang Holy Spirit. Ba't hindi pareho yung nangyayari? It's either you don't have the Holy Spirit or you are not listening to the Holy Spirit. Simple as that. It may, be, it may hurt us, pero kapat ito yung katotohanan. In our life as a Christian, in our life as a Christian, Paul was taught by the Lord and we can see how he was willing to be taught by the Lord. In Galatians chapter 1, verse 16 and in 19, here we can see here po how he was taught by the Lord, or the, at least we can see here. It says in verse 16, To reveal his son in me, that I might preach him among the heathen, immediately I confirmed not with flesh and blood. And in verse 17, Neither went I up to Jerusalem to which were apostles before me, but I went to Arabia where Paul was taught by the Lord and returned again unto Damascus. Here we can see him, po, that he did, not, he, he did not even go to Jerusalem. Do you know why Jerusalem was being always being mentioned here in Jerusalem? Kasi ito po yung pinaka-center ngayon dati. Ito yung pinaka-center. Kumbaga, nandito yung mga key people. Si Peter po, Peter, James, and John. Nandito yung mga lagi nababanggit. And that's why you can see from Acts 15 that Paul needed to go to Jerusalem to to para po isangguni sa kanila yung teaching ng circumcision. Here you can see that. So that's why he is always mentioning here. And after that, in, in verse 18, Then after three years, I went up to Jerusalem to see Peter and abode with him 15 days. Nagkita lang po sila ni Peter for 15 days. And that is not enough for him to teach all the things that they have learned from the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why Paul, in three years, he studied with the Lord. But other of the apostles saw Ainan save James, the Lord's brother. Yung save dito, yung accept the, Lord, the Lord's brother. Nakita man yan si James, sabi niya, yun ang nakita niya. What Paul is trying to say is this. If he learned the word of God, and he was now obeying the Lord, the one who taught him is the Lord himself, under the power of the Holy Spirit. And that's what Paul is saying here. So here we can see, and after that, he was sent by the Lord. And we know that in, in Acts chapter 9, doon po niya na met ang Panginoon sa, sa, sa Damascus. And then from that on, he was given an instruction and he met Ananias to give the instruction what the Lord will allow, want him to do. Okay, so he po, here, he was sent by the Lord, his authority is from God. In Acts 26 verse 16, here we can see that he was, the, the Lord was the one giving instruction and taught him in Acts 26 verse 16, But rise and stand up, stand upon thy feet, for I have appeared unto thee for this purpose, to make thee a minister and a witness both of these things which thou hast seen and of those things in which I will appear unto thee. So the Lord gave him the, proper, the instruction. And here we can see here, Paul is quoting Acts chapter 9. If you are going to see, study here, Paul is uh, quoting Acts chapter 9 before the authorities under accused by those people accusing him. Dinidepende po niyang kanyang sarili dito. Here we can see po, even though Paul is doing the things that God wants him to do, he was still being accused by these people. Though he is teaching the word of truth. Actually, in this, in this chapter, chapters, 26 of Acts, he was and before the authorities. He is being questioned. And he is 
be accused by these people. Kapatid, gusto mong makita ninyo dito. Though, sometimes this is our, minsan inisip natin bakit naman sinusunod ko naman ng Panginoon. Why am I, I am doing the things for God, but why am I being persecuted? Kapatid, mangyayari yun. The Lord said, you will be persecuted because of me. So Paul here, we can see that his life, even though he's, he's being sent by the Lord, doing the will of God in his life, still being under accused of these people. And he's depending, in, if you're going to read this, Paul is depending himself before these people. Kaya po, misan, nasa atin na po ang lahat, we have everything, we have the Holy Spirit, we know the Word of God, and sometimes we are questioning God, why is it that I am being persecuted? That's what the Bible says. Because this world will continue to persecute us. If there is no persecution in us, what is the problem? As a believer of the Lord Jesus Christ, when we have the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of the world is deep, different from the Holy Spirit. That's why there is always a struggle. Even in us, there is always struggle in us. The Holy Spirit is correcting us. In ourselves, the, the Spirit of this world is trying to make us down. And the Holy Spirit is helping us to say and give us the truth from the Word of God. That's why there is struggle. That's why if you don't have the Holy Spirit, there will be no struggle in you. That's why Paul here, depending himself, is trying to depend himself, even though he is trying, he is preaching the word of truth. Bilang mananampalatay po, sometimes we are uh, uh, being weakened by the struggles. But you know what? Sabi nga ni Pastor Joel mentioned that uh, yung Ay, uh, sinabi niya kanina yung uh, kamit in the morning, but joy kamit in the morning. Diba? Although meron problema sa gabi, but in the morning, it means to say there is hope. Although we are under problem, sometimes, I don't know if you see this, kapatid, Paul, even though Paul recognized that in his life, but he's always looking on the Lord. He's always focusing his eyes on the Lord. That's why he said, I said in his life, he is crucified with the Lord. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. The life which now I live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So here, that is what Paul is trying to make us know that even though these things happen in his life, he is being persecuted, he is being accused by these people who lied. Actually, they are lying to accuse him. But at least Paul know what he is doing. What he is doing, what he is being, uh, doing that time that he is doing the will of God because he was sent by the Lord. But there's something that we need to, to see po sa buhay natin bilang mga mananampalataya as a believer of the Lord Jesus God that we need to see that Christ is in us. The problem that we always face is this. We want to solve the problem without Christ. It, I don't know if you are, di ba the Bible, it even says that even for a glass of water, we need to, di ba, nabiblas tayo when we give. But it, the, the problem is this, when did you thank God in your life for even a glass of water? And sometimes, di ba, siguro kahapon lang, maybe that's only yesterday that you have problem. And then you pray to God with all of your heart. And then you saw God answered your prayer. At least we can see the power of God in us. Bilang man, as Paul doing in his life. You know what? Paul says, nung gumabasa nyo lang po, even, even, even if I die on that place, I will still go there. He never feared that. You know what? Because he know who is with him. Whom he is obeying in his life. So here po, let me just continue and then uh, malapit na po tayong matapos. In, uh, in Acts 20 verse 10, it pa rin po yung ano doon. Sabi niya, and said, what shall I do? What shall I do, Lord? And the Lord said unto me, arise and go into Damascus, and there it shall be told thee of all things which are appointed for thee to do. So dito po, ay, uh, binigay sa kanya instruction that he was taught and given the instruction for him. And in verse 15, 22 verse 15, for thou shalt be his witness. This is the, the reason why God sent him and for thou shalt be his witness unto all men for, for what thou hast seen and heard. 
Kung ano yung mga narinig mo, kung ano yung mga nakita mo, ito ang ituturo mo sa mga taong ito. Is it the great, di ba familiar po sa atin the great commission? That we are commissioned to preach the gospel? Let us not, ano po, let us not uh, maging uh, sitting pretty in our life as a Christian na uupo na lang tayo, atin na lang tayo, which is good. It is a good thing for us to attend the church, we attend the prayer meeting, we attend the seminars, even pag meron tayong mga special occasion dito, that they will preach the word. We, it is good, that it is a good thing. But it is a good thing for us also to obey. You know what? I always pray to God and I, I will always ask Him, this is only my, at least this is what I'm trying to, my desire in my life. I said, Lord, at least one soul a day. Lord, at least one soul a day. Although we are thinking sometimes it is impossible for the Cambodian to understand it in what I said, Lord, American, Filipinos, whatever, please, at least one soul a day. At least one soul a day. And we can, in our life, at least we can accomplish what God wants us to do. I'm not saying, po, don't be guilty. People. What I'm trying to say is this. If we see that God sent us and God taught us about these things, makikita po natin yung kahalagahan ng mga bagay nito sa buhay natin. And we can see and we will, although there are persecution in our life, there are problems, kaya nga sabi ko sa inyo kanina, sometimes we even use most of our time solving our problems. But if we will allow God to move in our life, even though we are on that problem, yet they can be solved because of Christ. It's para magkano po yun? Magka, mag, magkasalungat. Okay. Let me finish in this po, sa, sa tatlong verses po. Here, we can see in verse 10, 11, and 12, there is a, meron po kayong makikitang pattern. There is a pattern that you can see from verse 10, 11, and in 12. In verse 10, in order for us to give God the glory and let Him be full of us, we need to deny ourselves, which is the thing that we need to do. And when we are full of Him, or when we, God, allow Him to rule our life, then in verse 11, God can teach us. He can teach us. And when we have learned of the Lord, and then that is the time that God can use us. But we, God can never use us if we are full of ourselves. And we are not studying the Word of God in our life. So I hope and I pray for all the I don't know if it is long or what, but still, I just want to thank God for the privilege to share the Word of God. And let's pray.